Okay, we're here at my art show in Glencoe Museum in Radford. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm here to install right now a work and that work is RGB. It's a collage thing. It's very small. It's glittery. You can see it's got some glitter going on there. And it's a little place. Now this does have a hanger. See it gleaming in the light so beautifully. My wife got these little hanger things to help me out here. And there she sits. Now this one is RGB. Um, this is the color scheme that, you, that is on your computer that you're probably viewing this in right now. Um, looking at this little screen, the colors look really weird. But you can see it kind of changes as you move along it. Transparencies, collage, and other assorted bric-a-brac. Um, this is another one I made with my wife, Pris. This is called Electra. Um, we did a combination of things. It's uh, printing on construction paper. Uh, Pris got all the shapes around the side. Quite lovely thing. These are some of my newer works that involve glazing. Um, these are only about three layers of oil glaze. Um, one is called Water Over Rock and one is called Water Onto Rock. White Cosmos, another oil painting done in a glaze style. Not a whole lot of paintings in this show, but um, had to do in, it, something in between my large painting uh, series I'm working on, which is called Alice in Wonderful and Wild West Virginia. This one is called, what is this called? Large Small Waterfall. Um, kind of get into some of the details here. A lot of people see this as monochromatic. Um, there's actually a lot going on color-wise in this. And you can see the glaze doing its thing. The thing I love about glaze paintings is they change throughout the day. As you look at them at different times, you get a kind of different impression of what's going on. It highlights different aspects. And this one's called uh, Black and Blue. Um, this is a lot of transparency. It's kind of a decollage transparency thing. They've got all kinds of interesting surface qualities. You can see the decollage, the torn paper. And then as you come out, you see the complete image, black and blue. Now this one is RYB, and this is the color scheme that most artists use. Um, when you paint and um, do things mixing-wise, paint mixing. Um, it's very layered. You're not going to be able to see all the layers of this. It's actually got a collage in the back. Then there's a transparency between that that's been drawn on. Then there is drawing on glass. Then there is drawing on the front of that glass. Then there's another transparency with drawing on it. So it's very layered. Uh, it's kind of based on Piet Modron's work. Especially how he kind of went from drawing trees into very geometric shapes. You can see the tree there in the background. Um, this one's called Sergeant Juniper. That's the type of bonsai it is. Me and my wife take these trips to these um, arboretums and stuff. And this is from the arboretum in, I think, Georgia. Uh, this one's called Elephant Ears. I went from sharp angles with a metal ruler into trying to curve out these angles, as you can see in here. Um, that's how this whole thing came about, kind of, you know, cornering the circle or whatever, or maybe the other way. This one is called Succulents, and it's pretty small. I spent a lot of time on it. It's Prismacolor markers, or I mean, um, colored pencils and inks. And then finally in this room, the last Bluminati piece that I'm showing is entitled Orange Sunflower, and this is a watercolor. Let's go see what's in some of these other rooms. So if you've ever been to my art shows before, you might have seen this work. I'm seeing it all the way across the side of the room to try to show it. It's called Crooked Letter. It's based on satellite photography that um, me and my wife looked up. This is another collaborative piece. Um, and this is of the Mississippi. I love the kind of formal quality of that blue line coming across it. I want to get in close here because I want to show you how it's made. Okay? Um, you can see some of it actually is collage, like this piece here, and some of the forms are actually painted, like this one here is all paint. Okay. Now my wife, what she did with, with this a lot, and I'm going to get really close here, so don't be scared. We won't actually touch the art. She has manipulated paper here. Let me find a good piece to see what she's done. She's kind of 
dissolve the ink with a um, citrus product that um, then allows the ink to run and make all kinds of weird kind of cool fractally things. Okay, this is a good example right down in here. Okay, um, That's all just in the paper itself, that's not paint. Um, so it's something we were messing with. I think we're going to probably come back to that idea. It makes some really nice textures, real nice textural qualities. Okay. But then, of course, it all comes together and looks like a thing in the end, right? Just like how atoms make us and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a very cool work. It's, it's a good one to spend a lot of time with. Um, nice, beautiful triptych. Long work. Very long work, as you can see. These are all bluminated tablets, is what they're called. This one is called, uh, what is this one? Split Second. We can't really see these well um, from this point of view. This one is called... Um, off season. It's called off season because it's got a watermelon here with flowers that wouldn't be blooming, blooming at the same time. I think I'm more, much more clever than I actually am. Um, now if you notice these things are doing weird things as light is striking them. It's because they have lots of layers of glitter um, and stuff within the Mod Podge. Okay, this one is entitled The Dark Woods. Maybe it doesn't look all that dark, but I tried to make this collage area kind of not work like all the pieces kind of quite don't don't quite fit um, and they seem to kind of go against each other not totally pleasant sort of sight <laughs> and this one is called morning glory and you could probably guess why because there's morning glories all over it a series of collages with transparencies drawn over top of them which is with a piece of glass sandwiched between them so basically what you get is these neat effects as light hits it. Um, you can kind of see it cast shadows on the surface below. Uh, maybe you can't see it through the camera. But anyway, I've arranged these. I've got 17 of these in the show. And I've arranged them um, in kind of a rainbow here at the spectrum. Okay, This one's called Pieta. This one's called Unity Punity. I'm just going to run through them. Signature collection, we have some of my favorite artists here. Paul Rubens, Keith Haring, Basquiat, Magritte. Alright, so this one is called The Magic Kingdom. And we got Disney World back there, the uh, palace. And then we've got Duchamp's um, fountain here. And some other bric-a-bracs and stuff. Um, these are kind of about ready-mades. Um, the ready-made frame that I painted a color. Um, the kind of already-made surface you know, other people's signatures. All right, so as we go around the room, we see that the kind of rainbow continues. This one's called skill. And we've got skill saws, kind of also questioning, you know, how much skill is actually involved in this process here. So this one's called do not operate. This one's called orange you glad. The X and Y of galaxy. This one's neat, I think, because the glass actually cracked. Um, inside there. It's hard to see with this glare, but you can kind of see. But it's behind the two layers of transparency, so it's all held in place. It's kind of neat. This is one of my favorites. I don't know why, but this one's called the Maria Dimension. All right. um, it's named after a legendary Pink Dots album, the same name. And yeah, I listened to the album about three times and made this thing. It's Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Um, you can see the joke there, IBM. Uh, like I said, I think I'm much funnier than I actually am. Um, we got some intestines, um, some blank signs, some hurricanes, some buildings being blown over. Kind of what it feels like when your tummy's not feeling so hot. This one's called Forkel. I, I love the colors of this. You, it really doesn't translate well. It's such a light, kind of airy thing. It kind of glows out from the surface. Um, it's made from the for same forklift as Do Not Operate. A forklift box, basically, I traced it from. It just, I saw it, and you know, my brain can kind of measure things, and it just seemed like it would measure perfectly into this these eight by ten frames, and it did. When I first started, I was thinking a lot about pop art when I was making these, and this one's called Inflatable Balls, and we have the image that Lichtenstein got his image from of the the lady holding the inflatable ball. It's kind of an art history reference, um, kind of a jokey thing. This is the first quiltage I made. That's what these things are called. Uh, my wife actually named them quiltages. Um, I was trying to find an archetype that's very 
American in a way. Um, and I kind of stumbled across the quilt idea. It gives us a sort of sense of, of home, a sense of warmth. But really, in the, the end of it, it's kind of just a, a design element, okay? We've got lots of pinwheels and weird things like that. This one I got, um, it's all mostly done from Desert Storm Pro Set uh, baseball collecting cards, which I thought was an odd thing to collect cards about. But um, apparently I was reading the packages and, and the um, proceeds go to War Vets. So I guess that's pretty cool. But it's just kind of odd to have playing cards associated with it. And I've added stuff like, you know, Terminator 2 cards. You know, you can see here's George Bush here. You know, Gorbachev, stuff like that. We've got a nice hologram in the middle. It's a cool Taj. This one is called Frenemies. I'm just going to go through these now. This one's called Picasso Original. I bet you didn't know there was a Picasso Original here. See, it says Original. And it also has Picasso's signature. Picasso Original. And it actually has... Warhol's Brillo box is there, and a Dorothy Gillespie piece behind it. This one is called Blue and Gray. Um, it was in the Roanoke Times. And once again, we have quiltage elements. Blue number two, that's this one. We're kind of going into the gift shop here. Yes, these are all for sale. Um, this one's called Book Club. This is another one of my favorites. You see there's the book and the club. Yes, Mr. Olmstead, you're very funny. Um, this one's called 13 Birds with One Stone and Hornet. Oh, I forgot this one was in here. This one's called Catterwall. This is from a different series, totally, called The Fiend Folio, which I never finished. And then this one's called DJ Please Pick Up That Phone. I'm on the request line. And it's named after a Missy Elliott song. Another Virginia artist. So, uh, this is another collaborative piece. This one's called Evolution. Pris made the little metal peoples. And I kind of and we helped design it together, and I did the kind of quiltage. This is the second quiltage I ever did. I thought this was really cool. I was able to find my signature there and her signature in just letters off things. I think it was cups or something and something cool, you know. Very cool. Got some glitter on that little guy. He's cool. And a dinosaur. They're best friends. Red, white, blue. Um, and it's just very complex. I'm not going to try to show it all to you, um, but this is quiltage gone to the max, basically. It's like a quilt that's having a personality crisis. It just changes and changes the patterning. Boxes that don't work, things shifting apart, things falling apart. It's cool work, you should come explore it. Infrared. Transparencies and collage. This one's seen more, okay, I'm gonna get a little further away from it to see it. And this one is ultraviolet. And it makes middle one is seem like yeah it's a very cool show I hope you can make it once again it is called <laughs>